Welcome back to Mwah, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. I am Mike. And I'm Rusty. There he is. Uh, Rusty, we are here for season one, episode four, and it is entitled. It is entitled. Uh, actually, I don't think I have this one written down. <laughs> I didn't either. That's why I asked you. Oh, uh, it was something. Oh, yeah. Something about Willie, I think, is what it is. Yeah, something it's about Hank, Willie. Hank gets the Willies. Yeah, Hank That's gets what the Willies. It is. Hank That's gets what it is. The there you yeah, go. We are, we are the foremost authorities. There we go. So uh, we start this one out with uh, what we don't know yet is a dream, and it's at Willie Nelson's Penderales Club. Is that Pedernales? Pedernales, Pedernales, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Pedernales Club. I don't know what that. Yeah, means. what do you, was it say? No spitting, no fighting, no, no gambling. Spitting, no fighting. And then when it had gambling, it had uh, parentheses <laughs> yeah. with like a he he ha ha <laughs> yeah. in the middle yeah. of there. Yeah. Yeah, for those that don't know, Willie Nelson got in some real trouble with the IRS for a while. Yeah, he had some uh, real big IRS yeah. issues. He actually, uh, while he was in trouble with the IRS, he wrote a whole album. Uh, the IRS, uh, it was uh, the album was titled something about the IRS. It was like the IRS. Uh, right. Oh, the IRS can't take my memories or something like that. Yeah, something yeah. along those lines. I did look up uh, Pendernales. I, 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 uh-huh. I, there's no way I'm saying that right. Uh, it says it is in Gillespie County, Texas. Okay. Uh, it is the county seat for Fredericksburg. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, mm, know. I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, also on that sign, it says uh, uh, no more than 12 in your foursome. Yeah. So <laughs> enjoyed that. Um, so we see Hank uh, playing golf with Willie Nelson. Yep. They, and uh, they, uh, they, uh, the, the, synchron- the, the, the synchronicity mm-hmm. in their tee off. They tee off together. Uh, Dead solid, perfect. They both say, and then they yeah. sit down to drink their Alamo beers, and uh, then well, they. The the funny thing I've thought about is when they chucked it, they chucked it into a recycling bin, right. not on the ground right. or in a trash can. It had right. the recycle symbol right on into it, the recycle which, bin, which is uh, <laughs> speaks to Willie Nelson, I guess. More about Hank than Willie, I think. Sure, on that one. sure. And then Willie wants to jam, uh, and so they have this perfect jamming moment, and uh, this hummingbird is just kind of around them. It's just this beautiful, yeah. It's just summer. like a little serene moment yeah, for them. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start hearing clang, 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 and uh, Hank wakes up, and it's Bobby strumming on the on on uh, Hank's Hank's guitar, beating on it, just His beautiful the hell guitar, out of it. yeah. So we go straight to the credits, and uh, as the keeper of the flame here, I want to I want to let you know, no yell, no bell, no yell, uh, no bell on we this just one. Had okay, the, we had the straight uh, had the straight credits. All right. Uh, and then we're, we're still in Bobby's room. Hank's, uh, hey, have you lost your mind? Bobby said, I could have been naked. You need to Yeah, I could have been naked. You could have knocked. knocked. Been naked. And he's standing, on, he's standing on his bed doing this yeah. Elvis arm yeah. swing, just beating the crap out of this antique guitar. Uh, and Hank is really upset because this is Betsy. This is Betsy the guitar. Yeah, the, the guitar he even took to prom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Betsy is not a toy. She's a 1963 gilded solid top. Uh, and then, uh, he, he finds out that the guitar smells like cheese. Yeah. And then, and then Bobby, he's got this poster mm-hmm. of, uh, what is celery head, celery head, which mm-hmm. is a parody, of course, of uh, carrot top. Yeah. And, uh, he talks about, uh, uh, Eddie Cheddar. That's what he says. He says, right. I'm Eddie Cheddar. Right. Cause his dad was saying the guitar yeah. smelled like cheese. Prop comic. Yeah, he's a prop comic. And then he talked about uh, a prop comedy about the shoe. Yeah. Did you, did you, you got that written down there? Yeah. I don't yeah, know what exactly yeah, he said. Yeah, yeah. He said, uh, oh, no, I don't have the joke about the Oh, shoe. you don't have the joke? Huh. No, he said that uh, he attached a shoe. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He glued a uh, glued a Kleenex box to, to a shoe, shoe and said, you got a runny nose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Hank just looks at him and goes, 
what is a celery head? What is a celery? Yeah, and then he said, that's not comedy. Yeah. That's not a joke, son. That's a good waste of glue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Bobby proceeds to tell him how uh, celery head makes $3 million a year. Yeah, the, the, how's that green-haired freak make $3 million a year? He must have got that wrong. People don't pay money to see things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which they do. We paid. Sure. Uh, you paid money for us to go see a, sure. some, a lot right. worse than a cheddar right. guitar. And then, and then uh, Hank tells him, which which I thought was really weird that, that he brings up this performer and he goes, now, Robert Klein, that's something people pay money that's for. Something. Robert <laughs> Klein? What the hell? <laughs> anyway, woke up Peggy uh, and uh, tells him that uh, some green-haired freak told our son to rub cheese on my guitar. And uh, Peggy is, uh, oh, that's at Celery Head. I saw him on Entertainment Tonight. Yes. He makes $3 million <laughs> a year. <laughs> and he still he just can't believe that somebody would pay that much. And then he starts ranting about how Bobby woke him up from golf dream That's number right. three. Golf <laughs> dream number three. He, uh, you, you know, the funniest thing to me in King of the Hill is some of the little short asides, just stuff that just throw away stuff, right? Yeah. So like this one where Luann walks out, and he goes, good Lord, put on some pants. And she says, I'm wearing shorts. He goes, bah, don't scare me like that. Don't scare me like that. And the, but that's the funny thing is he always acts so ta like taboo about her when she's you know yeah. in a towel or something yeah. like that. But she barely wears any clothes as a character. Yeah, anyway. that's true. That's true. Uh, anyway, he uh, he starts talking about how uh, Bobby chipped Betsy's bridge and woke him up from Willie Nelson golfing dream number three. Uh, Peggy's just there to calm him down. You know, it's just wooden wires. Um, and then he starts, uh, he gets really like emotional about it. I love this guitar. Do you understand? Right. Do you understand do you, what I mean? Do, do you, you know what love is? <laughs> <laughs> well, I love my family. <laughs> he said, yeah, exactly. That's the yeah, kind of, that's that's the kind of, kind of love, love I have for this guitar. That's right, that's yeah. right. <laughs> he was mad. So you can see all the emotion <laughs> in him. Yeah. And then again, what I thought was weird for Hank, he's going to go back to bed. Everybody's up. It just seems like Hank's the guy that ought to be up yeah, before be everybody up before else. everybody. Yeah. Well, I'm going back to bed. Uh, and then uh, he asked Peggy if she's going to come. She said, no, nah, I wouldn't want to make Betsy no, no jealous. Um, and then, and again, one of the little asides, you hear Hank off in the next room, headed towards the bedroom, and he goes, Luann, don't sit like that. <laughs> <laughs> So we get Bobby out on the lawnmower. He's uh, out uh, out in the backyard uh, on Hank's riding lawnmower. Hits the brake release. Well, and before that, you can you, you hear him saying, uh, "Oh yeah, he's imitating his dad." I yeah. sell propane and propane accessories. Shut up, Dale. <laughs> yeah, shut up, Dale. That was my favorite one. Yeah, shut up, Dale. And then he uh, he he slowly, very slowly, runs into Hank's truck. Extremely slowly, like. With enough time for yeah. Bobby to hop off, or even just all you do is just reach down and hit the right. brake. He stop literally it. could have just yeah, gotten in just front of it. Got in front of it would have been over with. <laughs> Hank, this this wakes Hank up again. Uh, he's startled, and he says, uh, "Well, you know what? Uh, hold on, before we go for you, you know what kind yeah. of startled me that Hank's uh, yard would have that much of a roll to it. Sure. You think that Hank Hill, being the the guy who's got the primo lawn, <laughs> would have it leveled out there perfectly? Yeah, you think it'd be graded better? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, it wakes him up and uh he's startled uh, by saying no willie that's a one-way street and <laughs> yeah because he hears him, him up yeah, yeah. And he asked bobby what happened to his truck uh bobby's response is your mower hit it yeah your mower <laughs> hit it <laughs> like he didn't have anything to do with it uh and then hank talks about uh sending his mower to one of those children's psychiatrists <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, next thing we see is uh, Peg and uh, Luann out pitching the ball back and forth. Oh, uh, she's throwing heaters right at Luann. Luann's like, come on, chill out. Yeah. She's busting her hand up. Yeah, yeah. and this is, this is when you kind of figure who Peggy is. Like, this is the first mention of her playing softball or being a – you know, she does that big wind-up pitch. And yeah, that sort she of kind thing. of alluded to it when she uh, kick-started the car for, uh, for them in the, the Order the Arrow episode. But this episode really shows that – Peggy Hill is a tomboy. Yeah. I feel like she's like oh, a, she's yeah. like a tomboy, oh, 100%. and she's burning her like she's not just throwing the ball. She's yeah. like hammering the ball, she's, and she's got a good Luann. solid stance with those sixteen oh, yeah. triple E's too. Yeah, good solid stance. She could lean all the way forward, Lou, all the leverage. <laughs> Lou Ann says, "I if I if I break another nail, I'm going to fail my manicure final." Yeah, so uh, she has to ease up a little bit. Uh, then we get, uh, Peggy and, uh, well, Peggy questions her about what's going on at school. And she's, oh, I'm also failing braid work. 
And uh, Peggy, uh, Peggy, yeah. <laughs> Peggy has a little bit of advice for her. She says, braid work does not come natural to the women in our family, honey. You know it, I know it, and the whole town knows That's it. That's what was funny. Yeah, the whole town <laughs> knows it. And she's not even from that town originally. She's from Montana. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, we go, uh, uh, the, the horn on the truck is just constantly going, going off, off because yeah. it's been hit by the mower. Uh, Bill, really helping out, says, uh, sounds like your uh, your horn's going off. And then uh, <laughs> Dale climbs up or whatever, and he goes, I was a nose hair away from obtaining inner peace. That's right. Yeah. He, was, he was meditating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that chinging noise? <laughs> that's a, There's a soundboard on the internet of Hank Hill, and that's one of the sounds that's on there is about what's that chinging noise. Dale informs him that it's probably a stealth helicopter with noise-canceling capability. <laughs> They're still working to get the chings out. <laughs> They're still working to get the chings out. <laughs> anyway, the the horn starts stops honking because Dale kicked the truck, and, and uh, Hank tells him don't take credit for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Bill wants to know how Dale uh, knew about the stealth helicopters. And uh, Dale says, you got to go to alt.conspiracy.black.helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, black dot helicopters. <laughs> and then you get it. Then, again, it's another one of those uh, asides. If, if you want the ultimate aside here, it's Boomhauer every time, right? Yeah, every uh, time. He's, dang old internet, baby, click, 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 naked chicks. It's real easy, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Click, 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 click. So <laughs> next thing we see is Bobby. He is uh, now using a pitching wedge, which we assume is Hank's. To, six uh, iron. Oh, it's a six it's iron? It's a six ah, iron, yeah. He's got, out there hitting dog shit with a six iron in, well, in the backyard. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was dirt plots, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, so did Hank. Uh, he said, don't don't use a man's pitching wedge to hit clumps of mud. It's not mud. It's dog do, Dad. Yeah, it's dog do, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> So, and, and if I'm not mistaken, we're only on episode four here, but Hank is then in the kitchen scrubbing down the golf club. And is this the first time he says that boy ain't right? I think it is. I right? think it might be. I think this is the first this boy ain't right. This might be right. the first the boy ain't right. Uh huh. And then Peggy comes in and you see that uh, it kind of runs in the family because she's, she's very upset that Hank's using Carlos. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The dish brush. The dish brush. <laughs> Anyway. And I think that right. I think that's really just speaking to her jealousy. I think she's just being facetious because of how like oh, how sure. Hank is about his guitar, and it kind of really bothers her at the end of the day. Why can't uh, Hank wants to know why why Bobby can't do something useful like uh, that boy in Canada that ran across with no legs? Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the guy with one leg that ran across Canada. Yeah, that's right. Peggy says uh, that Hank needs to spend some more time with Bobby, and he goes. Uh, a full 18 holes, that's a lot of stress for that's a young right. boy. Yeah. It is a lot of stress for a boy. Um, but uh, she, she thinks that he uh, needs to spend a little time mano a mano. Mano a mano, <laughs> yeah. Her Spanglish. Yeah, yeah. Her, her, the funny thing is her being the uh, substitute teacher of the year and teaching Spanish. Um, so Hank feels bad. He's out there trying to apologize to Bobby. Well, he's talking to Bobby for a second, and then, right. and then he's, Bobby. Bobby, and yeah. he's sitting there playing the Game Boy, not paying attention to Tells him. Tells him he's got a problem with concentration, takes the takes the Game Boy away from him, and Bobby's real upset because Hank just killed him. He said, well, you needed killing. Yeah, you, you <laughs> might have needed a little killing. <laughs> you don't have any goals. Bobby's like, uh, can we go to go Six, Six Flags? Flags. Yeah. <laughs> and then need, he starts talking about you need idols and stuff like that. Yeah, you need he a talked hero. about how his hero was Willie Nelson, mm -hmm. and, and then he talks about... Uh, he said, you need a hero beside that broccoli neck. Yeah, that broccoli <laughs> neck. And then he says, uh, well, who are your heroes, Bobby? He said, oh... Eddie Stilson, he got to level 16 on Scream Ninja. That's right, that's right, Scream Ninja. <laughs> and then he starts talking about uh, uh, Howard Adderley or whatever it is. Or or, or uh, Hank said, you're going to end up yeah. like that Jason Adderley son. Hank is real worried about him ending up like Jason Adderley. And then it shows uh, they're sitting there playing uh, Howard Adderley. They're sitting there playing cards. Jason Adderley's yeah. the dad. Yeah. So they're playing cards or whatever, and then Hank gets up to look for the bathroom. He's, oh, I'm bursting. And then he goes and grabs and opens the door, <laughs> and he says, oh, I'm sorry. And it was a kid at a computer that looked like a damn alien. He did look like an alien. Didn't have any hair. Yeah. He was all green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did really good to uh, – I guess that's the early stereotypes of what a video gamer was oh, back sure. then. Yeah, back then a video gamer was like a you're a extreme nerd back then if you play games. Whereas now it's like a cultural changed. thing. No, it's a cultural thing now. <laughs> Everybody, joking. I think, does it. But yeah, no, it probably hasn't changed too much. Bobby is uh, Bobby's excited because uh, uh, 
uh, Howard Adderley is his number two hero. Yeah, number two hero. <laughs> he said, Bobby, you need to be lectured Dude, all, all afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> so, anyway, he ends up taking Bobby golfing. Well, he takes um, the guitar with him, too. Mm-hmm. Straps, and then he tells Bobby. He straps Betsy into yeah. the seatbelt. He yeah. tells Bobby specifically, sit in the middle, put Betsy in front of the airbag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bobby is uh, on his way to go golfing with his dad, and he asked, asked him uh, about who his heroes are. And, of course, uh, uh, Hank is talking about Willie Nelson, how he grew up in Texas. He loves golfing and playing guitar. And Hank grew up in Texas. He loves golfing and playing guitar. He had trouble with the IRS, and I must have spent six hours on that 1040 form. <laughs> easy, <laughs> yeah. easy my ass. Easy my ass. <laughs> So he asked Bobby who his hero is, and he says Willie Nelson also. And he's just like, well, you're just saying that because I said Willie Nelson. He said, no, Dad, he's alternative. Yeah, he said, he's got long hair, Dad. He's alternative. <laughs> he's <laughs> not alternative. I've followed him, and he starts naming all he the said, genres of music. He said, you take that back. I've followed him from country and western to country to adult contemporary, and that's as far as I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but the fun fact on that is uh, – Actually, Willie Nelson has never created an album underneath the adult contemporary genre. Yeah. All his albums have been either or, or, uh, country or What about blues. Stardust? Stardust is adult contemporary, isn't it? Because it's like standards. They don't consider it adult contemporary. Oh, it, it, okay. it wasn't like on the bill, whatever yeah. the adult yeah, contemporary yeah, yeah. billboard oh, I don't doubt was. That. They drive by Willie Nelson's Country Club, uh, which is locked up and says property of the IRS. On yeah. it. You see a couple of IRS officials over there in a golf cart. Yeah, they drive by on the golf cart. You know, yeah. That goes back to all Willie's uh, tax issues. Yeah, we get that a couple more times. Which is funny. That's what I like about Willie Nelson is is – Everybody, you know, assumes that since he's this Texas boy that he's just going to be a, a diehard conservative. And it's real funny when you still see it, even after all these years and his politics have been known, you still see it on social media and stuff yeah. like that where yeah. people are talking about Willie Nelson. And I'm no, like, he's well, very liberal. Yeah, very liberal. Yeah. Smoked dope in the White House. Oh, yeah. Uh, it says uh, uh, then we the, we get Luann and uh, being driven to uh, hair school by uh, by Peg. You have to go practice or take her test or whatever it is. Yeah, and she's she's pumped up. She's going to show that braiding machine who's boss. Uh, but she gets in there and and uh, quickly gets caught up in the braid. And I was really impressed with like how she managed to do that because she braided it all the way to the floor <laughs> and her hands were stuck <laughs> dead in the center of it. <laughs> all right, and then we get. Uh, Hank and Bobby are taking the guitar by for repairs. They're taking it to Earl's Guitars. He uh, he does new, used, and repairs, as yeah, seen repairs. on the on the window. Um, and we get <laughs> and this is Earl is uh, uh, voiced by the same guy who does Bill, yeah, uh, Stephen Root, and uh, he says, uh, "What do you think's wrong with it?" And he says, "Well, the bridge is the symptom, but uh, fret." Asymmetry is the is the disease. <laughs> I really think the I like the voice that he chose to do for yeah. for the for the guitar oh, yeah. guy. The voice that he created for that it's just real unique. I think it's I think it's comical too. He's real kind of. He seems like he's only smart with guitars. Yeah, like the guy's only like just yeah, yeah, focused yeah. on oh, guitars. Oh, the guy lives for yeah. guitars. Yeah, he, he does. He does comment that it that the guitar smells like a belly button. And I like how he says it smells like a <laughs> belly button. Smells like a belly button. <laughs> And then uh, they start talking about it, and, uh, of course, uh, Earl's son, Les, uh, and I'm assuming named after Les Paul, yeah, uh, is standing there, and he goes, like Celery Head, and uh, he... <laughs> He gets in on the whole celery. He gets head in thing. on it, yeah. And his dad looks just as disappointed as Hank looks. I'm I'm Camembert Humperdink. Yeah, and he goes, <laughs> "Well, go back there and get to alphabetize guitar strings." He goes by letter, by letter. <laughs> just go, just go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then we find out how funny Earl is because uh, uh, he asks he asks Hank about selling the guitar, and uh, uh, Hank says, "No, it's not for sale." He says, "Well, most guys would sell their wives before they'd sell a guitar like this," and both of them chuckle. And then uh, Hank's like, man, I got to remember that one. And like, then he it's goes, such a good joke. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes, well, I got a mess of them. And then he goes, <laughs> hold on, what does he say? I he, goes, he goes, I got a million of them. And he says, uh, uh, women and guitars both come with strings attached. Yeah, strings attached. And then he goes. And then uh, Hank's like leaning in, listening for the rest of them, yeah. you know, the big ones. And then he says, uh, well, I, I guess that's the only ones I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then we see a, a kind of a montage of Peggy around town. She talks to the mechanic. She talks to the hairdresser. She goes to a garage sale, and it's all griping about Betsy. 
That's it the whole Hank time. Love Betsy's. Yeah, she ends up buying a guitar for five dollars, or so the tag says, just from, to smash it. Yeah, from Mrs. Hellman. Yeah, and then just bust it right there on the ground. I don't know what Mrs. Hellman was thinking, but uh, she had to be horrified. Yeah. Well, Peggy, you know, she's different. She, she definitely is different. Uh, definitely Hoo-yah. has a lot. Yeah, hoo ya. Hoo ya. Definitely got a lot of residual mental health problems. <laughs> so we uh, we we transitioned to Hank Dale, Boomhauer, Bill, and Bobby all out at the Arlen Public Golf Course. Uh, Boomhauer drives the ball. And, and it seems like, again, Boomhauer is the best at most of these things. Yeah, yeah, know? Boomhauer definitely seems uh, – it's like him and Hank are the two athletic ones out of the bunch yeah. for sure. Hank, yeah. Hank, Hank's pretty he, – he does pretty good when there's sport sporting activities involved. Well, we find out later that, that they were all on the same football team, and Bill was like the big, dumb blocker. You yeah, know? He yeah. Was like the, he would just get in the way. Uh, but Bill – No, he's is, a big, dumb running back. Oh, that's right. The Bulldozer. Bill oh, Dozer. Yeah, right. Bill uh, Dozer, Bill but, Dozer, yeah. Bill, uh, Bill's been thinking about this whole hero worship thing, and and he thinks that Santa Claus would be a good a good hero for mommy. Yeah. <laughs> he gets all those packages uh, to, in twenty four hours all over the world, and then Hank tells him he's dumb or something like that, and he goes, "Well, you aren't you a mean one, Mister Grinch?" <laughs> Santa, Santa Claus is for babies. You're a mean one, Mister Grinch. Uh, Dale drives, and uh, of course, Dale's bad at it. Yep. Uh, he 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 exclaims about the damn Russian titanium alloy. Yeah, he tries to bend it. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Bill then gets up there to drive the ball, and um, he goes into his swing, and then just stops for a long time. <laughs> oh, and then uh, Boomhauer's sitting there in the golf cart, and uh, he says, uh, "Well, keep your arms straight, or you know, just speed it the hell speed up." Speed it the <laughs> hell up. That's right. Uh, Dale realizes he's out of cigarettes. And uh, at the same time, Bobby asked him, uh, Mr. Gribble, who's your hero? He said, you are if you go give me some cigarettes. (laughs) You are if you go give me some smokes. That's right. Uh, Which is funny. Uh, That's a, I guess that's a, that's the first time that you get to see, uh, uh, what's his name's crippling cigarette addiction, Dale's, Dale's cigarette addiction. Cause I mean, it's a theme throughout the whole entire show, but this is the, I mean, there's even a whole episode dedicated to it. But this is the first time where you get to see how bad he likes cigarettes is this episode because yeah. they got another cigarette comment yeah. that comes later. So Bill's over there telling a joke about a priest and a, and a stripper. And uh, Hank gets upset because he's like, Bill, the boy. He goes, uh, and then the stripper says, I've decided to repent and become a nun. Oh, and then Boomhauer starts <laughs> like, laughing. Oh, 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 Boomhauer's the only one that's laughing. And he goes, oh, dang old nun. Dang old nun. <laughs> So Bobby picks up the club. He knocks the ball uh, in the hole. Oh, first, and he's, and, first stroke. And the way he swings it is just, yeah. he's like hugging it with his full body and using his whole body to oh, hit yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Hank, Hank says, uh, you might be the next Lee Trevino. Yeah, he was that crazy a, uh, accent. Yeah, I looked him up. He was a, uh, I actually don't watch a lot of golf, and the only one I've ever heard of or know anything about are the ones that are like top three. Yeah. So I looked him up, and he is like, he was a, uh, the only thing that he never got, I think, was a, uh, a Masters, but yeah. he got every other champ. He got six major championships. There used to be, and this is a Lee Trevino aside, uh, there used to be a Mexican restaurant here in town called Trevino's. Oh, okay. And I remember going in there and seeing a picture of Lee Trevino, Trevino. on the wall, and apparently it was his cousin who owned the, oh, okay. the Mexican restaurant. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. So uh, hmm. uh, anyway, they, they figure that uh, Bobby's going to be great at golf, and so they have him try to tee off again a few times, and he's just yeah, terrible. Yeah, couldn't replicate it, yeah. Yeah. Hank, Hank advises him that he should swing less like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Bobby ends up letting go of the club during his swing. It goes off into the Airborne, distance. Airborne, yeah. And you see just the shadow of somebody over there, and the club hits him right in the head and knocks him the hell out. Yep, and then uh, they go over there, and uh, sure enough, it's Willie Nelson, and then Dale slides up in the golf cart and tells Bobby, hop in, Hank, get rid of the witnesses. Well, first he <laughs> says, check his pocket for cigarettes. Yeah, check his pocket for cigarettes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he wants him to get rid of the witnesses, yeah. Uh, Hank just gushes all over Willie Nelson because this is truly his idol. Uh, says he's been to every farm aid but one because he doesn't care much for that Brian Adams. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, now first he said, are you all right, Mr. Nelson? And he goes, I'm not, am I bleeding from the ears? He goes, no. He said, well, I guess I'm all right. Guess I'm all right then. Um, and so Hank takes this, uh, takes this opportunity to possibly get uh, Willie Nelson to sign something for him. He wishes he had had his guitar with him. 
But instead, I, he produces what I can only guess is like a scorecard. Yeah. Right? And says, make it out to my best friend. No, I don't want you to lie. Just make it out to my good friend. Yeah, and the thing is, the whole time he's chasing this golf cart, he's rolling down a hill and like... Willie don't look Willie's good Willie's like either. slumped yeah. over, like yeah. noticeably slumped right. over. My One of my favorite parts of this, of this, and it happens twice, is where they show where Willie signed something, and it's literally just one line. Just yeah, a it's scribble. just a bunch of scribble, yeah. yeah. But then they read it. They're like, <laughs> they read it like there's actually my something number there. one, one fan. fan. It's just a scribble. Yeah. Yeah. So Willie's in the cart looking bad. Hank chases him, uh, yells at him about how he's a hero. And Dale uh, remarks that uh, he took our cart. Yeah. <laughs> he said he took our cart. <laughs> well, he did. He hopped in the cart and drove yeah. off in their cart. Yeah. yeah. He just took off. So we're back at uh, back at the Hill residence. And um, it, it, apparently Hank had been telling Peggy all about what happened. And Peggy was like, was he bleeding from the ears? No. Well, he must be okay then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great call. Back. Yeah, I'll follow up on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so Hank is really upset because you know this has happened and and this is his idol and you know he was supposed to meet Willie Nelson. They were supposed to go out on tour together and then they were supposed to open a chicken franchise. <laughs> yeah, they had a now, whole bunch of ideas for now, anything. Yeah. Now how's that going to happen? Bobby hears how Hank is uh, really disappointed in him because he's outside sitting on the in the front yard. And so he's trying to do something to make up for it. So uh, uh, Les from the guitar store comes up and asks, are you Hank Hill? And he goes, yes. And so he takes the guitar from the kid, takes off on his on his bike, and uh, we find out that he's headed to Willie Nelson's house. Yep, I'm, I'm not sure how he was able to get from Arlen to Abbott, <laughs> I, but I he got know. there. Yeah, he found him. I know he did hit a bump. And, uh, oh, says, yeah, he I'm, knocks the guitar. We're not going to tell Dad about that I'm one. I'm not telling yeah. Dad about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he gets there, and uh, Willie's house is all chained up uh, because it's property of the IRS. Uh, yeah. And so Bobby hears uh, hears uh, some strumming or some some beeping and booping coming from uh, outside a trailer out in front of Willie Nelson's house. And so he goes over and finds Willie Nelson playing on a Game Boy. Ask him if he's playing Ben Crenshaw's Turbo Golf. Ben Crenshaw's Turbo Golf. <laughs> yeah. So Bobby gives him some tips on how to play. You know how to how to do better. Uh, and and one of one of my favorite things that's ever happened in King of the Hill. Oh, this exchange between Willie Nelson exchange. and Bobby. Yeah, I really yeah. like this exchange too. <laughs> All right, so you get Willie Nelson who says, "Hey, you're the kid that rakes my lawn." Bobby says, "No, I'm the kid who hit you in the head." Willie says, "With a rake." Bobby says, "No, with a golf club." <laughs> He says, you've been breaking my yard, yard with a golf, golf club? club? I want my quarterback. <laughs> I want my quarterback, yeah. <laughs> so he's paying some kid to rake his yard, yard for a quarter. For a quarter, yeah. <laughs> right. So Bobby uh, Bobby ends up calling Hank from uh, from Willie Nelson's house because yeah. he says, hey, Willie wants you to come over. And then he goes, you're teasing a gorilla in the monkey <laughs> house, You're teasing son. a gorilla in the monkey house. And Willie comes on the phone and says, Bobby, uh, uh, Bobby's no – oh, he, he – Willie Nelson comes on, and, and Hank is like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. He goes, Bobby's never stalked anyone before, and he's not very, very good, good at, at it. it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be something but like you'd think Bobby would do as awkward as Bobby is. You would, yeah, especially later in the series. So uh, Hank ends up going to Willie's. There's, there's, at this point, there's a big party on the, on the lawn. Oh, yeah, yeah, big party. Yeah, and he's just kind of walking around looking for Bobby, kind of yelling out for him. And then uh, – he does push one one guy out of the way. Rooster. He says, get out of my way, Rooster Boy. And that's Lyle Lovett. Lyle Lovett, yeah. 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 You never that, hear. that was his nickname was Rooster Boy. <laughs> yeah, Lyle Lovett. You never hear from Lyle, but uh, I thought it was pretty funny. He sees uh, he sees Bobby playing with Willie um, and uh, walks up to him, and he's, he's still real worried that Bobby has been stalking Willie Nelson. And uh, Willie says to him, I hear you're a good guitar player, and you've got a narrow urethra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, actually, is this the first? Is that also the first narrow urethra? Or Maybe. That might be. I have to look back. On, I have to go back and watch the, the last five episodes mm-hmm. and see if that is. So Willie had signed Hank's guitar, uh, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, Willie ended up signing Hank's guitar, and again, we go back to the scribble. Yeah, you it's know, just a scribble on a piece of paper. To my number one yeah, fan. To my number one fan. Yeah. Uh, and then we see uh, Lou Ann braiding. It's back at Hank's house, and uh, Lou Ann is uh, on the couch with Peggy, and she's braiding her hair uh, and gets a call. 
And Lou Ann's very disappointed because she almost had it. She almost, almost. had that brain. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and Willie at, or uh, Hank tells tells Peggy all about how Willie wants him to come to her his house and all this stuff. And she goes, "Well, I sorry, I can't make it. Ann Richards and I are doing our toenails." <laughs> yeah, and then Willie picks up the phone and says, "No, you're not. She's over here playing volleyball with." Uh, That's right. She's playing tether ball. Tether ball. Yeah. Yeah, she's playing with tether the ball. One of my roadies. Yeah. Uh, we get there and, uh, Hank is, is playing Betsy with, uh, Willie who's playing trigger, uh, which is Willie Nelson's guitar yeah. for, for years and years, years and years. Wore out guitar, but it's his guitar. And Peggy overhears Hank recite that joke again. I'd, I'd sell my wife before I'd sell my guitar. And boy, does that piss her off. Oh, it pisses her off. Yeah. Oof. She goes and, uh, sits with, uh, what's his name? Dennis Hopper. Sits yeah, she goes and sits with, with Dennis, Dennis Hopper. Hopper. Before, which this is uh, actually Dennis Hopper's voice. Yes, so it's the first yes. two celebrity appearances, I think, for and celebrity then voices. It, it, one, of the, one of the funny things that happens between them, though, is, is Boomhauer and Bob Dylan over by a tree just uh, mumbling, mumbling to each other. Mumbling to each other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, it sounded bang, like he was bang, 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 doing bang. song lyrics. Like he was like <laughs> doing uh, song yeah, titles yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And then you see Bill and Dale criticizing some girl. I, I thought maybe the girl was somebody, but I guess it's just oh, a girl that, at the That's party. my favorite scene out of this because uh, uh, it reminds me of my dad uh, uh, pouring his beer as a kid. And like he hated when he would go somewhere and they'd have way too much foam on it. Oh, he goes, yeah. I pay for beer, not foam. That's right. That's and right. Uh, he, what they say, they said, angle the glass. You're blowing it. <laughs> Nothing but foam. And she gets <laughs> yeah. it fine. She just and it's walks a good off. beer. Yeah, it's a good beer. She didn't pour a bad she one. She just walks off and they both just like, yep. Yep. <laughs> that's it. So then we see uh, Dennis Hopper sitting on a, um, uh, a picnic table with Peggy. Dennis Hopper is just going to town on some watermelon. Like, I mean, absolutely yeah. going to town Almost on some obscenely, watermelon. Almost yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's talking to Peggy. He said, Peggy, let's drive to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Peggy's griping, and she says, she's, she's talking in, uh, about Hank, kind of under her breath. She says, Los Mariachis Son Diablos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> guitar playing fool. Uh, so uh, um, Dennis says, uh, he didn't treat you right. You want me to kick his ass? She says he, how sweet he is, but uh, she goes, you're sweet, Dennis Hopper, but Hank would flatten you like a bug. <laughs> yeah, Hank would flatten you like a bug. <laughs> so uh, we're back at Willie, and he's complimenting Bobby um, and uh, – he said, you know, that's some boy you got there. And Hank's like, well, you know, I don't know. When I was your age, I worshipped you and Jesus, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talking to and Willie then he kind of goes on about how uh, how he feels about Bobby and all the stuff that Bobby's done that you yeah. know, throughout the episode and yeah. how, he, how he feels. And he looks at – and this is where you get your morality lesson from is sure. right here. So uh, he goes, well, he needs a hero. And he goes, well, Hank. Hank Hall. He Hank calls Hall. Him Hank Hall. <laughs> he said, Bobby wants to play your guitar, your mower, wants to ride right. your mower. He goes, well, maybe you are his hero, That's Hank right. Hall. Yeah. 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 And, and it clicks for Hank at that point, you know, and um, Hank and Bobby kind of bond over that, and and Hank starts singing that song that he wrote a long time ago about Peggy, about Peggy Leg. Peggy, Peggy, Peggy Leg. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, and it's funny because, like, in, in all um, – uh, situation comedy fashion, you know, she overhears it and all's forgiven. You know, all's everything, forgiven. <laughs> everything's yeah, yeah. All's forgiven. It takes her back to the moment in time where he yeah. wrote that song for her. Yeah. Yeah. I was headed over here to knock you six ways to Sunday, and then I saw you playing that guitar and singing that song. I love you, propane man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. And that's the th oh yeah, that's the thing that made me laugh too at the very very beginning of the episode with Willie Nelson when he's sitting there with Willie and Willie mentions, oh well, I wish I could sell propane and propane that's accessories right. too. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I wish I could be a propane salesman. <laughs> well, it's funny. Times funny. Oh uh, yeah. So uh, the last uh, one of the last things we see is Willie. Uh, Willie's sitting there and he's getting his hair braided by Luann. And he uh, he talks about how she braided it perfect, but uh, next time ease up on the glitter spray. <laughs> ease up on the glitter spray, right. yeah. That's right. So we get our credits, and uh, again, unique after credits, during credits scene here. Yeah. Uh, we get uh, Hank and Willie just sitting there strumming and kind of BSing with each other. And then in the in the background, we see Ann Richards playing tetherball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which Ann Richards was the uh, Democrat uh Yeah, Ann Richards was the governor. Well, she was the Democratic governor of Texas. Yeah, she's the, the last one that, uh, Democratic governor of she Texas. She is the one that brought us the um, the lottery. 
We did not have the lottery until Ann Richards. Oh, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, I didn't and know that. She's the one that signed it in. She's the one that promised that all the money would go to education. And obviously, that's happened because our educational system here in Texas is is, is wonderful. Well I'm, well, I'm sure she had good intentions, but I <laughs> oh, guess I'm uh, sure. I'm but, guessing she was the last uh, Democratic president, you know, or uh, governor. governor. Sorry, yeah. not president. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Texas is a funny place. Um, when we have Democratic governors they're almost more republican than the republicans sometimes sometimes absolutely and if we can get a democratic governor that's the that's the key yeah can't even yeah. can't even really uh they can't even really get a word in edgewise because of the gerrymandering and stuff sure yeah. well this uh this episode is absolutely one of my favorites it's got some great quotes in it uh it is uh, now you were telling me before this that it was written by Oh, yeah. It was written by... Hold on, let me grab my notes back out here. Yeah. So it was written by... Uh, this episode was written by Johnny Hardwick, okay? It was, and uh, he's the guy who voices Dale. He's a yeah. great comedian. And then uh, it was directed by a guy named Monty Young. Mm-hmm. And it was really hard to find anything about him. I had to, like, dig for it. But uh, apparently in the 90s, he was really involved with Disney TV. So, like, Winnie mm. the Pooh, Gummy Bears, DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, Aladdin, The Wuzzles. Yeah. And he did all that. And then uh, in 97, he did uh, King of the Hill. So he did three episodes of King of the Hill and then uh, went on to do Cow and Chicken and then went on to do... Family Guy, and then well, it sounds Doblox. like it so sounds like uh, King of the Hill really changed the trajectory of this guy because he was doing gummy bears and <laughs> stuff like that. And oh, then, absolutely! And then he does, yeah, he does King of the Hill, and then all of a sudden he's like cow and chicken. Yeah, he went from like campy <laughs> kids comedy on yeah. you know TV to doing King of the Hill, and then from yeah. going from King of the Hill to going to outlandish crap like cow mm-hmm. and chicken. I don't know how you go go from there to there, but yeah, yeah. cow and chicken that was a really odd, weird one. Yeah. Well, this was uh, this was another good one. Yeah, it was great. It was um, a great one. It's a great episode. Um, Wimitanye, Wimitanye to you as well. Uh, and uh, I guess I guess we'll call it quits. And, that's it. Uh, that's a that's a wrap. That's now an we, episode. Now we got to go watch episode five. A thousand times. A thousand times. Just to make sure. This is like purgatory all of a sudden. Almost. <laughs> I've watched a lot of King of the Hill. I don't mind it, though. All yeah. right, man. Well, you guys take it easy. Uh, we matanye to all of you, and uh, we'll see you next time, I'll tell you what. We matanye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.